Good morning and good day to all. On behalf of the National Peace Corps Association Board of Directors, it is my pleasure to welcome you to the 2021 Annual General Membership Meeting. Thank you for joining us to learn about the state of NPCA and thanks for your patience this morning while we put together some, um, uh, put aside some technical difficulties. This meeting overall provides an update on our financial help and shares the latest and greatest in the broad spectrum of programming uh, in support of our united and vibrant Peace Corps community. At this time, 1138 Eastern, I am calling the meeting to order. And as our first order of business, the bylaws require, we declare a quorum. This is defined as 100 members in good standing. And um, we are in attendance, um, counting attendance at the moment to establish our quorum. In our second order of business, um, we uh, must approve our minutes for the 2020, 2020 annual general membership meeting prepared by board secretary, Mary Owen Thomas. The draft minutes have been posted on the NPCA website, along with slides from the presentation from last year for reference. Also on the virtual event hub, you can go to the meeting agenda and scroll over the more info link to access the, um, the minutes there. A majority vote is required to approve our minutes. Um, please visit the poll. There will be a link in the chat for the virtual event hub uh, and vote on the motion to approve the minutes for the 2020 annual general membership meeting. We will conclude the official business and tally the vote towards the end of our meeting today. Um, but we will transition into the fun part of our agenda. Uh, as we already know, it's been quite a year. Um, before we dive into the details and learn more about all of the developments of the past year, I do want to take a moment and acknowledge our board of directors. These folks work behind the scenes, they drive our organizational progress, and I am so incredibly grateful for their service. Thank you, NPCA board. And now I'm going to turn things over to our treasurer, uh, Gretchen Uphold, for our treasurer's report. And uh, Gretchen, uh, take it away from here. Thank you, Mari Carmen. Hi, everyone. It is great to be here with you this morning. I think it's still morning for everyone. Um, as Mari Carmen said, my name is Gretchen Uphold. I am the NPCA board treasurer. I served as a volunteer in Ukraine from 2008 to 2010. And I currently live in Chicago where I work as a nonprofit consultant. I'm gonna walk through very quickly, just a few metrics that um, I think and that we think are important in terms of understanding our financial health. I will not be pulling up the actual audited financials here. That's a little bit much to do in a meeting like this. Uh, if you are interested in seeing the full financials, they are posted on the NPCA website. Uh, the 2020 financials, the 2020 audit is not quite up there yet. It needs to be approved in the next board meeting and will be posted in the next few weeks, likely. It is complete. The 2020 numbers you will see in these charts are 2020 audited numbers. So we will dive right in. Like I said, I'm going to move through this pretty quickly, but what I will say is if you do have any questions, or any, um, you know, you want to walk through the financials or anything like that, I am always happy to talk to anyone about the financials. So we'll go right to this uh, first chart here. Thank you. Um, so this is just a straight up, this is our budget over the last five years. And, and we have this just to show the significant growth that NPCA has seen in the last five years. In particular, seeing from 2019 to 2020, those top bars there, those uh, white bars are our unrestricted revenue. So you can see between 2019 and 2020, a growth of almost a million dollars in our budget from two million to three million dollars there. You can see the expenses at the bottom. As the next slide shows us, um, more importantly, this is our operating results. So this is the relationship between the revenue we brought in the door and our expenses 
you can see scattered results always positive over the last five years, which is great. And you can see a significant growth there in, um, in 2020. 2020 was a big year in a lot of different ways. Uh, MPCA undertook a lot of work in terms of the evacuation of the volunteers and everything else. Um, and really the community rallied behind that. And you can see that reflected in our financials here. Just digging in a tiny bit more on the next slide, digging down on that revenue, just to kind of show as our revenue has gone up, it's gone up in a particular way in terms of contributed revenue as opposed to earned revenue. So you can see that earned revenue is that um, white line. Not surprising in terms of the fact that we haven't been having conferences, in-person conferences and other events, which would typically be some of our earned revenue, but also really seeing a focus over the last few years in terms of the staff's efforts in bringing in contributed revenue. It's also important to note this is unrestricted revenue. This is just revenue that's available to us in that given fiscal year. We've also raised significant restricted revenue over the past few years as well. That restricted revenue is restricted for the future. It's either time restricted or for specific purposes, and it really sets us up well for future years in, term, in terms of having revenue that's available to us. Moving now from our operating results, which is really that surplus deficit, profit loss, whatever words you choose to use there, um, looking at two quick metrics here in terms of more of our long-term financial health or the accumulation of our financial health over time. My favorite metric to think about this is something that we call LUNA, Liquid Unrestricted Net Assets. It is essentially our operating reserves, which you, and the, the uh, calculation for it there is at the bottom. Like I said, anyone who ever wants to talk through any of this, um, I love this stuff. I'm happy to talk it through with you. But most importantly, what you can see here, we actually had negative operating reserves from, uh, I believe it's 2015 through 2019 that we can see here on the chart. This year, for the first time, that number has switched to positive. That 615,000 equates to about three months, a little more than three months of operating reserves based on our budget size. So that, that is a really important thing for us as we think about our future. Apologies if you can hear these sirens going back behind me. Um, so really thinking about you know building that safety net, that's essentially what our operating reserves are and the fact that we managed to do that so well this year. One more slide for you here. Months of cash is a metric that some of you, particularly if you come from more of a for-profit world, might be more familiar with. So uh, showing this as well, I personally prefer that months of Luna metric in terms of kind of our overall financial health, but we can see here as well, months of cash also going up, becoming positive, that months of cash, cash, months of working capital, slightly different metrics, but we can see that we're well within the benchmark of nonprofit organizations, which is great. Our financial health is in a really great place right now. Um, that is really due to the efforts of the staff over the past few years, fundraising, um, watching our expenses, and really making sure that we're being uh, thoughtful about how we're using our resources, but also meeting the needs of our community. So like I said, um, I am happy to talk to anyone anytime who wants to look more in depth at our financials. You will be able to find those 2020 audit and 990 on the website very shortly. Uh, past years are available there. With that, I think I will turn it over to Glenn. Thank you all very much. Thank you uh, so very much, Gretchen and Mark Carmen as well. Uh, thank you both for serving on our um, executive committee of the National Peace Corps Association. I would uh, like to give a special thanks to Mari Carmen, especially for her eight years of service on, on the board of National Peace Corps Association, the most recent three as the chair of our board. And she's just done a spectacular job of leading our, our organization and um, helping uh, provide leadership for the overall board of directors. And as uh, she retires from the board, uh, we're just very grateful for her service at, and all that she's done uh, for the Peace Corps community, even before uh, she was with the National Peace Corps Association as a board director. Um, I'd also like to uh, just thank our uh, community for supporting NPCA. Uh, the, the, the financial uh, results that you have seen there in our financial reports that Gretchen has presented are a direct result of the generosity of our community and supporting our mission and saying, yes, we believe in the causes that you're fighting for, and we want to support them, and we want to invest in our organization. The National Peace Corps Association is our organization for the Peace Corps community, and you have responded by uh, making possible many of the programs and, 
activities and initiatives that you're going to see me report on here pretty soon. So again, thank you very much, Gretchen and Mari Carmen for your leadership on our board. Um, I'm the president of National Peace Corps Association for the last almost nine years now, and it's just been such an honor and a privilege to, to, to be in this role serving the community. Very grateful for the active involvement of so many members of our community, uh, some of whom you'll see recognized throughout these programs here today. Um, we have a great uh, program actually for the day. It's going to be a, a long day probably for many of you who are going to join uh, all of the events, but uh, uh, really interesting seminars, or excuse me, panel discussions and speakers and, and presentations. But without further ado, I'd just like to kind of dive into uh, a re quick recap of, of what has uh, happened here at NPCA and in our community and in the Peace Corps community over the last year uh, since we last reported at our annual general meeting last year. Uh, it's been a really busy month for us, a lot of activity uh, that in part has helped commemorate the 60th anniversary of the Peace Corps. Um, last, um, for, on the 14th of September, uh, we joined with our friends over at the Constituency for Africa and, and, and sponsored this event that was really important to us in, in helping um, see how we could work together to increase African-American inclusion in Peace Corps and in international careers. Some, some very um, distinguished guests that spoke at that event, organized in large part by Mel Foote, our fellow returned Peace Corps volunteer and his folks over at Constituency for Africa. Really great outputs from that meeting, which will help inform and guide even parts of our mission as we work to increase uh, uh, African-American inclusion in the Peace Corps. And PCA has a role in that, and we're looking forward to doing our part to helping as well. And in our post-service uh, support to our PCVs to ensuring that they have pathways into international careers after their service. As well, on Wednesday, the 22nd of September, uh, many of you joined us in the morning for a very special moment at 945, uh, commemorating the, the moment at which uh, President John F. Kennedy signed into law the Peace Corps Act of 1961. Uh, we were joined there by uh, Bill Josephson, the first uh, legal counsel for the Peace Corps and the co-author of A Towering Task, and essentially the, the blueprint for the Peace Corps. We're grateful for Bill Josephson's uh, work in, as an architect of the Peace Corps and established in it. We were also joined by Bill Moyers, uh, who was uh, walking side by side with, with Sergeant Shriver, uh, knocking on the doors of Congress, making sure Congress approved of the Peace Corps Act and, and really helping to shape the, the launch of the Peace Corps. Uh, both of those gentlemen joined us and then former Congressman John Kennedy and uh, Joe Kennedy for a conversation uh, reminiscing a bit about those days of the Peace Corps and, and the signing of the uh, Peace Corps Act. And then we heard from our own um, Miriam Foote, uh, a volunteer who had served in Benin and had been evacuated last year in 2020, and then joined the National Peace Corps Association team as an advocate associate. And, and she is really leading uh, many of our efforts to help make the Peace Corps the best that it can be, as we say, and shared her perspectives on uh, the future of the Peace Corps as well. So commemorating the, the, the 60th anniversary of the signing of the Peace Corps on Wednesday, uh, the following after that same afternoon, uh, several of us had the opportunity to go to Arlington National Cemetery, where we shared in a moment of recognition and silence and acknowledgement of John F. Kennedy's role in establishing the Peace Corps. We were joined there by some distinguished guests that included former Congressman Sam Farr, known as Mr. Peace Corps on the Hill, as well as the acting director of the Peace Corps, Carol Spahn, who was with us that day. A little bit about our vision, mission, and goals for the National Peace Corps Association. Uh, our conversation here is uh, uh, framed around these uh, goals and our strategic plan. So you'll hear me refer to these throughout our, my presentation today. Uh, really, our vision is about a united and vibrant Peace Corps community, and our mission is to champion lifelong, uh, lifelong commitment to Peace Corps ideals. The, the uh, lifelong commitment that begins as we uh, go into the Peace Corps and serve as volunteers and continues throughout a lifetime. And our, our role here at the center of a community of 240,000 individuals who have shared the Peace Corps experience is to really help our community do its best in all that we do as, as change makers and do-gooders around the world. So part of that is focusing on the Peace Corps itself, helping it be its best. Um, this is a, a primary area of, of, of focus for our advocacy programs. Another pillar of our work is about our community and strengthening our community, empowering our members themselves individually and within their affiliate groups to thrive. And if our community is thriving, 
we are achieving our goals. If we're helping the community achieve its goals um, at the center of this committee, then we are accomplishing our mission. And finally, our impact around the world to amplify the work, the good work that uh, Peace Corps volunteers and returned Peace Corps volunteers and post country nationals, diaspora, family and friends and others that do in helping amplify the work that we do in the Peace Corps community. And I should say that we see our community when we talk about community as being uh, those individuals who have yet to serve in the Peace Corps, those who are aspiring to serve, those who are serving in the Peace Corps, those who have served in the Peace Corps as either staff or volunteers those who have supported Peace Corps volunteers or return volunteers as family or friends and our partners and others who work with us to help uh, achieve this mission. So we're very grateful for a broad community of impact and one that is committed to lifelong service to others. So when we speak about helping the Peace Corps be its best, our first pillar here, this is something that, that we're all in together. We, we know that the Peace Corps itself, the agency is working to, to become its best. We've heard our leader, the leadership of the Peace Corps uh, repeat this a number of times, our community wants the Peace Corps to, to, to provide the best uh, and safest and most secure uh, experience to uh, Peace Corps volunteers and that the programs are appropriately developed and implemented and that we are uh, making sure as a community uh, of constituents of the Peace Corps that the, the Peace Corps is uh, its best that it can be. And that's what we're working together for toward, toward in our first uh, uh, strategic priority. Uh, a while back last year um, at a special session uh, that was held commemorating the 60th anniversary, we heard several of the former Peace Corps uh, directors uh, call for uh, expansion and growth and even redoubling of the Peace Corps uh, as it reemerges and, and relaunches here uh, post pandemic, uh, including uh, I think the underscoring of the fact that now is the time for the Peace Corps to reset and relaunch bigger and better and bolder than ever. And that's what we're working toward in, in one aspect of our work. How do we do that? First and foremost, we look at a, a Peace Corps appropriations. This is the federal funding that is provided to the Peace Corps in support of uh, its programs. And our advocacy programs, first and foremost, focus on this area. Uh, here's what we see, though, as the, as the, ten, the trend for Peace Corps when it comes to its funding. Uh, the white bar on the left indicates the, the actual appropriations for the Peace Corps over the last six years. As you can see, it's been flat. Um, and the, the bar on the right, the gray bar, represents what the Peace Corps budget would have been just accounting for inflation. So if it had increased to keep pace with inflation, the budget would probably be upwards of $440 million or so uh, by now. Uh, so as you can see, um, the purchasing power of the Peace Corps has diminished over the last six years. This is a, a concern for us and a concern for Peace Corps as it works to relaunch uh, in this post-pandemic environment and many associated costs that come with uh, the retooling of the programs and the, the relaunch of, of the Peace Corps itself. So we're uh, working to try to increase the Peace Corps' budget. Our, our goal for FY 2022, which is just around the corner, has been $450 million to support that redeployment of the volunteers and in a very different world in which they're working in which uh, there are many different ways in which the Peace Corps has and will have to change in order to uh, serve uh, our world in this um, new environment. Uh, so a goal of $450 million by next fiscal year and uh, for uh, a longer term goal for FY 2025, uh, we have set our sights on $600 million to support what would be uh, 10,000 volunteers in the field at that time, uh, certainly post pandemic. So uh, these goals uh, have been established in jointly with our communications and coordination with members of Congress. Uh, we believe that because there's a continued uh, demand for uh, volunteers to return to their countries, there's a, a supply, if you will, of, of uh, applicants who are willing to serve in, in the Peace Corps Pre-pandemic numbers were roughly around 16 or 17,000 applicants uh, to serve in the Peace Corps each year for the roughly 3,500 available slots for Peace Corps volunteers to serve. So the supply of, of candidates and uh, the qualified uh, individuals to serve in the Peace Corps, as well as the opportunities for them to serve in countries around the world is, 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 is there. Uh, Peace Corps, of course, was operating in about 62 countries prior to the pandemic with roughly 7,000 volunteers. Uh, so um, this goal would be able to not only uh, redeploy larger numbers of volunteers over a longer term uh, time frame, but it would also allow uh, implementation of many of the 
reforms and improvements that we believe are important uh, and that would have uh, a price tag to them. So uh, in the House of Representatives, the good news is that we have seen a budget approved there uh, by the committee and by the House uh, for $430 million for FY 2022. This of course falls short of our, our hopes of a budget of 450 million uh, from Congress, uh, but it is a step in the right direction. It is one of the, lar is one of the largest um, uh, possible increases for the Peace Corps in terms of its budget uh, in, in recent years uh, of $20 million here. So we're expecting the same number from the House, maybe greater, but uh, it's very encouraging to see that we will at least hopefully see a budget increase of around $20 million for FY 2022. That's not going to come anytime soon. As you probably know, we've already gone into a continuing resolution, resolution mode and, and when an FY 2022 budget is approved by Congress and um, the president, of course, this is what we would hope to see as part of our budget. Just a reminder that the Peace Corps budget is 1% of the budget for international affairs and the international affairs budget, the 150 account as we call it, is 1% of the overall federal budget. So we're talking very small numbers here. Uh, we've done some numbers and, and seen that the, 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 the investment in Afghanistan in terms of military and other support there uh, was roughly $300 million a day. So uh, really, uh, and by comparison, it doesn't take much to implement the Peace Corps um, and, and even at the numbers that we had prior to the pandemic. At the same time, we talk about funding for the Peace Corps. We also really want to emphasize that part of, of, of Peace Corps and our work is not just a bigger Peace Corps, but a better Peace Corps. And this, this means reforms that are necessary and expected in the Peace Corps as it reemerges. Uh, I want to acknowledge that the Peace Corps agency and the leadership there has already begun working on many of these areas. Uh, these uh, in, in large part, um, emanated from our Peace Corps Connect to the Future report, uh, which was a product of the town halls and summit that we held last year following the, the evacuation of the volunteers uh, across the board. These were bold ideas and also expectations that the Peace Corps community voiced. And, and that collective voice spoke loudly on these issues. It allowed us to, to capture the, really the, 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 the imperative from our community for bringing about change uh, not just in the Peace Corps and the agency, but also in National Peace Corps Association and in our Peace Corps community at large and in our society at large. So many of these um, ideas and recommendations and, and expectations have uh, emerged from that report. They have been provided to members of Congress. They have been provided to Peace Corps agency leadership, and they've been produced and developed by the uh, leadership of a, an independent advisory council of returned Peace Corps volunteers, former staff, and others who uh, helped uh, develop this report, as well as the Town Halls and Summit. All of these provisions, uh, in one way or another, we want to see uh, implemented. Uh, we also believe here in the same way that it's the moment to try to redouble the Peace Corps and, and, and bring the numbers up with the additional funding. It is also the moment to really put forth a new vision for the Peace Corps in terms of the improvements that need to be made as well. Um, the good news is that we have the Peace Corps Reauthorization Act of 2021. This is a bill introduced now for the second time this year, uh, for, in this Congress, I should say, uh, by our lone returned Peace Corps volunteer, Congressman on the Hill, Congressman uh, John Garamendi, who now is the only return volunteer that serves in, in, on Capitol Hill. Um, he, along with uh, uh, Re uh, Republican Congressman Garrett Graves of Louisiana, uh, who introduced this bill, uh, have incorporated a number of the ideas and recommendations and expectations from our community. Uh, all of these uh, provisions have been in, in many ways driven by the community and the, uh, the work that our grassroots um, advocates have, have done. And so in working closely with Congressman Garamendi's office, uh, this bill has been developed uh, to cover a broad range of issues and provisions uh, that we consider important for the future of the Peace Corps uh, first and foremost, it provides funding recommendations uh, to bring the level up to 600 million by FY 2025 or thereabouts, and this would be sufficient to increase the number of volunteers to, to 10,000. But it also has a, a number of different provisions that are really important to helping improve the quality of the experience of both Peace Corps volunteers and returned Peace Corps volunteers, 
as well as reducing the financial barriers for, for individuals who may not otherwise have the opportunity to serve and taking care of our returned Peace Corps volunteers in, 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 their, service, in their life after their services. So one of the important uh, uh, provisions in this, um, in this uh, includes, for example, extending whistleblower protection to Peace Corps volunteers. This is directly related to issues uh, of sexual assault in the Peace Corps. Uh, it also, for example, increases, increases the disability uh, payment to return Peace Corps volunteers who need to be on workers' compensation, raising it from GS-7 to GS-11, increases the readjustment allowance uh, to make it a, a more um, uh, accessible opportunity to return volunteers to be able to come back with just a little bit more money in their pocket, and extending health care to Peace Corps volunteers uh, after their service uh, for a little bit longer time. So. This bill uh, has, as we said, a, a number of, of, of uh, uh, provisions that are important for us going forward. It is the, uh, one of the most comprehensive uh, pieces of legislation related to the Peace Corps and probably the most historic in terms of, of the work that it can do in laying the framework and the, a blueprint for the future of the Peace Corps. So our um, kudos to uh, Congressman Garamendi and his team for their work on this bill. And we are expecting to see a Senate uh, version emerging relatively soon. We have been working with the Senate chamber um, uh, to try to uh, get a companion legislation here for the, the House version of this bill, which has already been introduced and has, um, as I mentioned earlier, I think 105 co-sponsors at this moment. How do we accomplish all this in, in terms of our advocacy work? Uh, first and foremost, it's about the grassroots movement in our community, the, mer the, the meetings that you have across the country, both in person and, and in, uh, in, in virtual reality, the tens of thousands of messages that you send to your members of Congress or phone calls that you make or letters that you write to them or visits that you pay them. And then our advocacy network nationwide really doing their work to organize grassroots meetings at the district level uh, with our members of Congress. At the same time, we're working to try to increase uh, our media presence for the Peace Corps and the Peace Corps community, uh, op-eds and letters to, letters to the editor and other types of uh, news features and connecting across generations in our community. If you've seen some of these headlines in the last few years, it's, it's, it's no coincidence, excuse me, in the last month or so, it's no coincidence. Uh, this has been a large part of the work of our advocacy team and our media team and our social action teams all working together uh, to support return Peace Corps volunteers and others to write op-eds and letters to the editor and opinion pieces um, for the newspapers, particularly focusing on the 60th anniversary of the Peace Corps and the importance of the Peace Corps for the future of America and for the world. So you uh, will see many more of these coming out. Hopefully my own op-ed will, will be published here in the next few days. But I want to thank all of you who have taken the time to write letters to, letters to the editor and op-eds to help support the Peace Corps at this moment. Finally, our third pillar of work, as we refer to it as about, second pillar, I should say, sorry, is about our thriving community. And this is helping our individual members um, to uh, succeed in their life after Peace Corps and our affiliate groups to be thriving. Um, Global Reentry is a program that we introduced last year. As we bring the world home from our service, there is a period of transition and adjustment for return volunteers. And, and in particular last year for the evacuated Peace Corps volunteers, uh, this program was essential. But this is a program that's going to continue now uh, for uh, the longer term uh, as a gateway for returning Peace Corps volunteers to bring the world home and to, to learn more about their opportunities for academic studies, as well as uh, employment and careers and, and the peer support and community support that they might need, as well as other well-being support that we can provide to them. Uh, global reentry has been structured around providing uh, really key services to return Peace Corps volunteers immediately after their service, but also over the longer term. So the program is now expanding to include RPCVs uh, across the spectrum and across the, the generations of service. And uh, we're looking at also trying to focus in on opportunities and support that are necessary for uh, returning Peace Corps volunteers of color for, for, for jobs in, in the green sector, for example, and addressing climate change and, and other environmental issues, as well as working uh, in humanitarian relief and other areas with refugees. So really trying to, to work our, uh, provide our support to help our returning Peace Corps volunteer community to, to uh, thrive in, in, in its life, their life after the Peace Corps. Our, our affiliate groups now number 185 groups. Uh, this is growing uh, each year, it seems. 
Uh, these are, are groups, many of which are thriving and very active in our community. Um, some of the most recent groups that we've seen, of course, have been related to workplace uh, affiliation. And also then more recently, some of these groups that are emerging to help tackle uh, some of the social issues around the world that are important to us, uh, such as climate change and refugees. And uh, we're, we're all about supporting these groups, providing services to them and strengthening their capacity so that they can achieve um, the goal that they have. And with that, we're pleased to recognize Peace Corps community. Uh -huh. This year is um, a winner of the Lorette Miller Rupee Award for outstanding community service for their just amazing work that they've done in, in part more recently and uh, focusing on resettlement of Afghan refugees here in the United States and mobilizing our community to serve refugees around the country and around the world. So our hats off to Peace Corps Community for Refugees and all the great work that they've done and the more than 1,200 members that they now have working on these issues, uh, advocacy and community service and awareness in particular. Also just one of the things that we do is provide support to our groups. Uh, we now have 70 uh, affiliate groups using our uh, platform for community building. Uh, this provides some consistency and the look of our organizations across the board of, of the affiliate groups, as well as a user friendliness for uh, their members and ability to just uh, have their work uh, out there, their calendars and events and other activities. Uh, so the community builder platform that we provide to groups is, has been essential for many of them. If you're a group leader and your group has not yet been able to take advantage of this resource, please let us know and we're happy to provide uh, support to you on that. We also have an effort underway right now to try to help connect all of our community by filling in the gaps of, of the RPCVs that we don't yet have uh, on our database or in our, in our community. And so working together with the support uh, of, um, of many of you as group leaders to help uh, uh, really uh, fill in these gaps of volunteers, return Peace Corps volunteers uh, through our Peace Corps Community Connect program as well. Finally, in that third pillar of our work, which is about amplifying our, our global social impact, um, we have opportunities for our PCVs to uh, serve in short-term assignments uh, through our partnerships with Winrock International and NCBA Clusa. Uh, if you have skills in strategic planning, financial management, financial planning, um, in uh, marketing, those types of areas, we have assignments right now for you to go uh, uh, work with uh, partner organizations abroad. Uh, right now, remotely is the way we're doing it, but it looks like very soon we will also be able to offer some, um, some in-country experiences as well. Uh, but this is one way that we provide continued service opportunities for our Peace Corps community. Secondly, we have the Emergency Response Network. Uh, this is a, a, a part of our programs that has been ongoing uh, from time to time. Um, I just want to acknowledge Form 1 here for the nice logo that they helped us develop for this particular program and for another. The Emergency Response Network started uh, really back in 1994, though, with the Rwandan genocide, and NPC organized um, uh, uh, some RPCVs to provide support, uh, and uh, at that time, essentially uh, launched the Emergency Response Network. Over the years, it's helped deploy uh, volunteers over to uh, West Africa for the Ebola response. It's also uh, helped organize and deploy volunteers down to the southern border to work in, in hospitality center for uh, immigrants crossing the border. More recently, of course, last year, um, uh, really helping returning Peace Corps volunteers, evacuated volunteers, as well as our RPCVs, uh, get engaged and involved in COVID response uh, through a relaunch of the Emergency Response Network and Dr. Fauci encouraging all of us and thanking all of us for the service on the front lines of COVID um, and a special meeting that he had with some of our staff that were working on COVID response and volunteers. Finally, we have partnerships uh, that are continuing over several years here, TCP Global and Water Charity. Our work with them has enabled them to dramatically scale up the work that they're doing. Uh, by increasing the resources available to them, increasing awareness of the work that they're doing and helping strengthen those organizations and the great work that they're doing from a micro loan inter program uh, that is now spreading around the world thanks to the leadership of TCP Global, as well as the uh, Water for Everyone initiative, which is helping to bring water to every person in Liberia, Togo and the Gambia by 2023. So some really incredible partnerships that are making some great things happen for us. Our community fund finally last year responded to evacuees coming home who had uh, been unable to finish their secondary projects. 
Um, we uh, opened our doors to them for applications and uh, made grants, small grants in the amount of around $40,000 to 15 re uh, evacuated Peace Corps volunteers, enabling them to uh, continue the work that they were doing in their communities after they were evacuated, uh, complete uh, sanit water and sanitation projects or school construction projects or training programs back in their communities and, and keep the Peace Corps spirit alive uh, while there are no volunteers in the field. So as you can see th from the great work that's being done um, in our community with RPCVs that continue to serve, uh, the Peace Corps is still alive, if you will, through RPCVs around the world and around and through our partnerships that are working on the ground right now in those countries uh, to keep working on community level projects. Do you want to recognize one of our outstanding leaders this year? Uh, last night, I think it was, uh, we recognized Sherry Manning as this year's winner of the Sergeant Shriver Award for Distinguished Humanitarian Service for her work with Global Seed Servers, Savers. Uh, fascinating organization. I should mention that I think it was about four years ago at our Peace Corps Connect conference. Uh, she was a, a winner of our one of our pitch competitions and received a small grant that gave uh, Seed Savers a, a small boost at that time. And uh, she's gone great. Uh, to, she's really done well since then and, and really uh, developed and expanded her programming. And now we're able to give her this recognition and hopefully yet another boost to the work that she's doing. Uh, and this is the way that Return Peace, excuse me, National Peace Corps Association is able to support Return Peace Corps volunteers, social entrepreneurs like Sherry Manning and continuing the great work that they do after their Peace Corps service. It's really important for us to really tell our story about the great work we're doing in our Peace Corps community. So this is part of what our our efforts are as well. Uh, if you've not yet heard about this survey that we've launched recently this week, please um, be sure you're signed up for NPCA emails. Uh, you'll be getting more emails about this survey and we look forward to having you help us develop data that will complement the anecdotal evidence for the value of the Peace Corps. And this, this work will help serve our advocacy programs uh, with uh, the information and evidence that's necessary to demonstrate to members of Congress the value of the Peace Corps not just abroad in the, the communities that we serve, but back home in what we call that domestic dividend. So uh, be sure to make, uh, be sure to take our survey. And if you will, please uh, make sure you're signed up to receive Worldview Magazine. If you'd like to get it in print, we're now distributing it to everyone who would like to get it pretty much, uh, roughly 28,000 uh, on our distribution list at the moment. If you'd like also, there is a, um, a digital version as well of Worldview available to you. And I would like to just mention that stand by for some news here in the next few days. Um, Worldview Magazine <clears throat> has been nominated for some really uh, prestigious awards in the media community. And, and uh, we're looking forward to, to seeing if those nominations convert into awards. But uh, congratulations to the team that puts together Worldview Magazine and for all the contributors who make contributions to it, because this is your magazine, this is your this is your uh, forum for conversation and news around the Peace Corps community. So thank you all for your contributions and for helping making it possible. Quick look ahead at things we have on the horizon. Peace Corps Place, as many have heard, has been a little bit delayed because of the pandemic, uh, but we are uh, underway. I was over there actually on Wednesday and saw that the construction is underway and we are expecting to open in the next couple of months uh, here uh, in Washington, D.C. at the corner of P Street and North Capitol. That's about two blocks away from the Peace Corps uh, agency's new building. And so Peace Corps Place, we will likely have a grand opening uh, event uh, in the spring in March of 2022, in conjunction with other events that we have at that time. Uh, Peace Corps Place is going to serve as a, as a, a gathering place for the Peace Corps community. Uh, we'll do cafe on the lower level. We have a place to come and share stories and, and, and uh, create an environment for discussing social global social issues and having some good Ethiopian coffee with our partner there. Uh, we'll have a resource center for our PCVs and, and uh, we'll have some uh, Peace Corps uh, memorabilia and Peace Corps branded merchandise available as well up on the upper floors, uh, conference rooms and facilities available for our Peace Corps community to have meetings and reunions and other events as well. So we're looking forward to having this, uh, this uh, first time place ever for the Peace Corps community to call home. Uh, coming soon, too, uh, we're hoping uh, that we're going to be able to see a towering task uh, on PBS. Um, this is going to be made possible by the support of many of our members of our community. Uh, we are on a campaign right now, kind of a mini campaign to raise around $300,000 for 
uh, getting uh, the resources we need to do the editing and, and final cuts of the towering task for PBS. Uh, we, thanks to a, a very generous anonymous gift of $100,000, we have about $200,000 of the $300,000 that we need for this project to become a reality. So looking forward to seeing uh, the towering, a towering task now uh, on PBS after the many screenings that we've had around the country. Peace Corps Museum is on its way as well. We're going to provide some space at Peace Corps Place for the museum to have some small exhibits and, and other artifacts there as part of our interior decoration of the Peace Corps Place. And we're looking forward to collaborating with the, the Museum of the Peace Corps Experience and providing an opportunity to tell the story about the Peace Corps itself and its history, as well as the um, stories of volunteers uh, who return and, and bring uh, those pieces that they remember their Peace Corps service from. Finally, the Peace Corps Commemorative is, is also on track. Uh, we're working through a number of different permitting and, and other uh, requirements that are required here in Washington, DC, but this will be a construction down by the National Mall. A very simple, straightforward a park, if you will, commemorating Peace Corps values. And the Peace Corps Commemorative Fund Committee is working hard on advancing this, and we're hoping to see a groundbreaking for the Peace Corps Commemorative, I, I think probably now in spring of 2023. Looking ahead again, some events that we have, if, uh, if uh, conditions permit um, and, and the pandemic allows us, we're going to try to have in-person events next year starting around Peace Corps Week. Uh, our annual Capitol Hill Advocacy Day looks like it would normally would be on March 3rd if, if conditions permit for our leadership summit shortly thereafter that. And the opening, of course, the grand opening of Peace Corps Place would be during that week as well. So hope you can join us. As I wrap up here, I just want to recognize that there's a tremendous dedicated uh, team uh, at National Peace Corps Association working on the many things that you've seen possible here. Um, and I just want to congratulate them and thank them for their commitment to our mission and the hard work that they put in and the, the, uh, the effort that they provide in making all of these um, programs possible. We have a tremendous group of talented individuals leading the way and I'm very grateful for them and able to serve uh, with them at National Peace Corps Association. These are our, our permanent staff or staff that work with us uh, on a regular basis. We also have some consultants and some other part-time staff that work on more intermittent basis in supporting our work, uh, but they're all an integral part of our team and I'm very grateful for all of them and the work that they do. As well, we've got a team out in Seattle uh, working uh, with King County on the Emergency Response Network. Um, numbers are usually around seven or eight individuals uh, that are working on the, the COVID relief front there. Um, first in calls, in, excuse me, in, um, well, currently working in call centers uh, related to COVID relief. So thanks to them for their work. It's really hard work, very dedicated, challenging sometimes to, to, to help convince individuals to get vaccinated and tested and so forth. So they're doing an amazing job out there working on the COVID front. Also just want to acknowledge that we have a network of advocacy coordinators around the country. Uh, hats off to all of them, the great work that they do mobilizing and organizing our advocacy efforts on the ground. They're all volunteers. Um, they're all committed to this work and, and, and leading uh, forward the advocacy efforts in their areas and with their affiliate groups in helping make the Peace Corps the best that it can be. And uh, really our advocacy program wouldn't be possible without them. We do have some gaps though in our network. So if you happen to know somebody or live in these, uh, these areas, or these states, uh, we would uh, like to add some more advocacy coordinators to our network. And this is how we can do it. These are the places that, that we need to add a few more piece, uh, people. So with that wrapping up, uh, pro bono support that we get also from a variety of individuals uh, in, in support, direct support of our mission um, in particular leading committees or volunteering to, to contribute to worldview and other elements of our programs, as well as our very valuable interns that we have working with us and, and uh, helping with our programs. I just want to also quickly acknowledge the sponsors for uh, Peace Corps Connect, Carnegie Mellon Heinz College in particular as a gold level sponsor. sponsor. Uh, several organizations that have sponsored us as well um, with their generous contributions to, to, to NPCA and for this program. And we're very grateful for them. And without them, this program would not be possible. They help us uh, uh, to, to cover the costs of this program for you and uh, enable us to, to offer a Peace Corps Connect to you at no cost. And, and that's been a great part, I think, of this virtual conference this year is that there is no cost to anyone. We want the doors to be wide open for everyone and anyone who wants to participate to be a part of it. 
Uh, want to all each also acknowledge the steering committee for uh, Peace Corps Connect was comprised of uh, a variety of different national and local groups here in Washington, D.C. Um, that are part of the steering committee. They all have representatives on the steering committee for Peace Corps Connect and um, have provided leadership in developing the program and in developing the entire conference uh, as our, as our um, uh, hosts for Peace Corps Connect 2021. Finally, it would be, I would be remiss if I didn't recognize two outstanding individuals who have led the way on our program here today, Martha and Evelyn. Hats off to both of you and your team on the programs committee there, the variety of individuals that have been working with us to help develop the program. A well-merited recognition to both of you. Uh, thanks also to the behind the scenes work by Federal Con Conference, our partner for event production and hosting for helping make this conference smooth and, and really enjoyable and many, many other people who have been working hard to help put on this conference and, and to work on the programs uh, that you've heard so much about here. So very grateful for all of you. Thank you all for your attention. Apologies that we had some technical difficulties on the front end. We're working through those. I think we have our closed captioning now, now available and uh, for the rest of the program as well. Running a little bit late on our programming due to the delays earlier, but we're gonna, we're gonna be able to make it up later, I think. And uh, I want to just uh, officially uh, um, close the annual general meeting. And I believe uh, that we have votes that have been taken that uh, uh, do approve of our minutes uh, for last year's annual general meeting. Uh, so thank you all for, for that. And uh, thank you again all to everyone who has, has made uh, this Peace Corps community uh, the best that it can be. We're very grateful for all your leadership. I'm very honored and very privileged to be a part of it. 